Today we celebrate St. Matthew, and we notice that he is one of the evangelists who's also an apostle. There's two evangelists that are, that are apostles, Matthew and John. The other two were traveling companions of apostles. Mark, a companion of St. Peter, and Luke, a, a companion of St. Paul. Okay. But today we have Matthew, and it's interesting We look at his call. He's a tax collector. He's the IRS agent. (laughs) He's literally representing a false government in Israel. The Roman government. Which, according to to the religious establishment, had no right to govern Israel. And here he is, being called to be an apostle. A close, intimate companion of Jesus Christ. If we look at the apostles, how many of them were temple priests? Zero. Why? Why? Because the temple priesthood at the time thought it understood the definite limits of God. The limits of God was that God only appeared in a particular place, in a particular setting, to a particular people only. Despite the fact that in the Old Testament we have prophet after prophet saying that God would make Israel a light to the nations. That is, that God wanted them to carry salvation to the ends of the earth, revealing to other peoples, not just to an exclusive holy group, And that one was not to put trust in the words, this is the temple of God, the temple of God, the temple of God, as if that in and of itself could save everybody. But that rather God was looking for a heart relationship with people that would then express itself in the sacrifice. But if it's not a heart relationship, the sacrifice is useless. That's what Jesus means when he says, go and learn the words, I want mercy, not sacrifice. He wants a loving heart first. So if some of the temple priests had been called at the time, they would have limited what it is that God is about. And they, in fact, they did. They said, no, God can't, God can't take on humanity. God cannot become, a, uh, cannot become flesh. God cannot decide he's going to, going to take away one establishment and establish his entire people as a temple instead. He can't take away our system of, you've got the nations on the outside, then the women who are only allowed to a certain point, the men to a certain point, and then the priests, and then only one particular priest can go into the most holy place. It's a system of exclusion, isn't it? Yes or no? And if we were paying attention to the first reading, we should understand something very clear. And that is that maybe some of our Roman Catholic theology, not our doctrine, by the way, but the way in which the people of God thought about the people of God in the past and reflected upon it, maybe it was a little erroneous. Because it basically set the priest up as if he were God himself. Yes or no? But you won't find that in any documents... But you find it in the hearts of people. This idea of, unless you're a priest, you're not holy. St. John Paul II tried to break that off the church by canonizing as many lay people as he could. Some people complained about him being a saint factory. But I say, thanks be to God and thanks be to the Holy Spirit. If we listen to these words of Ephesians that we just heard, because really, let's face it, sometimes... Scripture is read, and we're like, oh, wasn't that a nice reading? But we have absolutely no idea what it just said. Because we, we, we're not beginning to think with a mindset of, I'm supposed to understand the Scripture. And if I don't, I have somebody I can ask. God, but also, you know, somebody who's supposed to build us up, right? The, the, we're supposed to, the, those who are placed in teaching positions are supposed to build everybody else up. And not just say, oh, this is, listen to this. and, and But to build up 
And any good teacher would always get their students not just to get the quote-unquote right answer, but to begin to think. Anybody who's a teacher knows that. You have to get people to think. You have to get the students to think. Not, not just to listen to the answer, but to think critically. This is what we hear. Grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Then we hear this other section that says, And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge, etc. Right? Because those two things are put together, sometimes we think that what that means is, well, Christ's gift, oh, to some, okay, it's this great huge gift of being an apostle. To others, it's this great big gift of being a teacher. To others, prophets, evangelists. And then, you know, maybe I get this small little gift. Those are two separate thoughts, actually. They are two separate thoughts to show the equality of believers. Every single one of us. The first thought shows us the equality of every single believer in the Lord. Listen to it again. But I'm going to change the words. Okay? And believe me, I'm, I'm going to be faithful to the Greek. And it's faithful to this translation too. It's just, if we hear it differently, sometimes it will help us to understand what it means. Grace was given to each of us according to the measure of the gift that is Christ. Whoa. Think of that. Think of a measuring cup, right? If, you got, like, if you're doing a recipe and you've got a one-cup measure, right? Okay. Now think of a measuring cup that is as deep and as wide and as long and as big as the gift of God in Jesus Christ. Think of that measuring cup. Can you actually fathom how big that has to be? I can't. Every time I go to put a limit on it, it's got to be bigger. Otherwise, it's not God, right? So, now imagine that that is the amount of grace that each, of one, each and every single one of us is given. And then within that, okay, there's also some who are given the grace of having particular ministerial roles. But it's to build up people so that others can be equipped to go and do what? To go and minister to who? To all those outside who don't know Jesus yet. Little did we know that when we come to Mass, when we come to church, it's supposed to be a little bit of school and a little bit of re-equipping and a little bit of refiring to get fired up to go out and to serve. And thanks be to God that we have the example of St. Matthew today because then we see, guess what? God calls everybody Anybody who will say yes. And he wants to give them the same amount of grace. According to the measure of the gift that is Jesus Christ. So, however much we limit the gift of Jesus Christ is how much grace we will receive. Think about that again. However small our measuring cup of the gift of Jesus is, that's how small... Of grace we will receive. And the reason I say that is this. Because we know that even if God gives grace over and above that. Unless we have faith to believe for more. That grace remains latent. St. Thomas Aquinas would talk about that. And just because we receive grace. Doesn't mean it's active in our lives. We have to literally challenge ourselves. To have that grace be stirred up. And fanned into flame. So I don't know about you, I don't want to limit what I'm going to receive today from God on the altar. I'm going to receive the grace of Jesus Christ today. I hope you will too. But let's not say, well, because I'm this person or I come from this background or I'm this, I'm this gender that somehow the grace I'm receiving is less. It's not. There might be somebody who's, whose job it is to, to minister that grace might be different. But that's a different story. That's not the end all and be all, is it? No. We know that the end all and be all is that we all 
are alive in Christ Jesus and that we all are sent forth to love as we have been loved by God in whatever our circumstances. So we ask St. Matthew today that since he was an apostle from unlikely circumstances that um, he might pray and intercede that we might receive so much grace from God today that we might recognize that we too are sent like an apostle, maybe just not called an apostle, but we are sent forth like the apostles. Ite misa est, the Latin words at the end of the Mass from the beginning, from way back when, right? Literally means go, it is ascending. Go, you're on mission. Some think it's mission impossible, but guess what? We have a God to whom nothing is impossible. You all get to be kind of like Tom Cruise or any other spies, male or female, right? To go and accomplish impossible missions with the Holy Spirit. So today we ask for that grace to be refired, not retired. <laughs> refired and sent again for the mission of God. That is, that all might know the fullness of Christ.